We got our regular recruiting update coming with Parker Thune of OU Insider at 247 Sports on today's episode of Locked On Sooners. You are Locked On Sooners, your daily podcast on the Oklahoma Sooners. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, Sooners Nation, and welcome to today's episode of Locked On Sooners. My name is John Williams. You can follow me on Twitter at John9Williams. Co-host Josh Helmer, you can follow him on Twitter at JoshOnRev. You can also hear him from 9 to noon, Monday through Friday, on Sports Talk 1400 in Oklahoma City or The Ref in Norman 94.7. And joining us for our recruiting update is Parker Thune, OU Insider at 247 Sports. Also, you can hear him on Steely and Thune at noon on 94.7, The Ref, and 1400 Sports Talk in Norman. Parker, there's so much to talk about. we got so much to get into, but how are you doing, man? Doing fantastic, and yes, there is a lot to talk about, but you know, as we do every time on this podcast, try to keep it digestible, keep it concise, but definitely keep all those Sooner fans out there in the know regarding all things recruiting and spring ball. Yeah, and for those of you who are, might be new to the show, Parker is like a day one guest for me. He's one of the the original guys that came on the show back in the fall of uh, 2020 in the COVID year. So this is it's always a treat to have Parker on, and, and we're going to jump into it. the The biggest story right now has to be Levius Overton announcing that he's going to make a decision on Friday, canceling visits with Ohio State and Oklahoma that would be coming in April. So where are we headed, Parker? I. I think everybody understands where this is headed and I don't think there's a whole lot of mystery or a whole lot of intrigue surrounding what the decision is going to be on Friday. Um, Given that it came immediately after the A&M visit and given that he elected to cancel the Ohio state and Oklahoma visits, there's not a whole lot to read between the lines on, you know, it's pretty clear that, LT Overton is going to be an Aggie and that's just the way the cookie crumbles. He's going to become the 30th commit and signee for A&M in this class. They've got 27 blue chips and nine, five stars. So look by any measure, it is the most impressive recruiting class in the modern recruiting era. So props to Jimbo Fisher and his staff down there. I mean, say what you will about their tactics, but They have managed to land a lot of elite talent in this 2022 class. And now the question becomes, what can they do with it? Because if there wasn't already pressure on Jimbo to succeed at Texas A&M, there certainly is now. Well, obviously, this is the Locked On Sooners podcast, and we're strictly going to talk about Sooners most of the time. But how has Jimbo Fisher and Texas A&M been able to pull this thing off if it goes the way that it seems it's trending like it's going with Levius Overton and then just that class in general. I mean, let's call it what it is. It's NIL. It's money driven. And that's, that's the nature of the beast these days. Texas A&M has made no bones about the fact, well, I guess Jimbo has, but let's be honest. He's the only one trying to keep secrets in that regard. Now, Texas A&M has adapted to the NIL game very fluidly and very efficiently and it's paying dividends because they've been able to land like i said nine five stars in the same recruiting cycle that's unheard of that's 25 percent of the five-star prospects in the 2022 class now i you know as far as the numbers go it's all speculation there's no clear answer as to what the numbers actually are and Uh, I don't think that's ever something we're going to have a straight answer on. But look, Oklahoma was the only school, I actually say for Oregon, I believe Oklahoma and Oregon were the only two schools that had offered both LT Overton and his brother Micaiah scholarships. So again, that would lead you to believe that if Micaiah is not going to be on scholarship at Texas A&M, there's going to be some financial incentive that renders the lack of a scholarship therein rather moot and so uh look say say what you will about college station being a destination about there being hype for texas a&m's future and about 
uh, the beast that is the SEC and how the Aggies are poised to make noise. Look, A&M fans can write this off however they want to if they're not willing to acknowledge that this is NIL driven. It absolutely is. We're talking a program. We're talking about a program that has never won anything meaningful <laughs> in college football, and that is right now a mid-tier program in the SEC. No, I I don't think there's any shame in calling a spade a spade here. They're playing the NIL game better than anybody at the moment. And again, now the question becomes: What can you do with all the talent that you've accumulated? Because if within two to three years, if you're not competing on the same level as Alabama and Georgia, then the narrative is going to very quickly turn on its head. And it's going to be, man, there is something seriously wrong culture-wise down there at Texas A&M. If they have more talent than anybody in the country, at least to the naked eye, and can't do anything with it. And that's going to be a huge question because we've seen for years that Texas regularly acquires good talent, but yet they can't reach the mountaintop of the Big 12. Is the same going to be said for Texas A&M and the SEC? There are going to be a lot of NIL collectives or slash donors that are going to be very um, impatient, I would believe. They're going to want a return of investment on their on their NIL deals. Like, and it that investment comes on the field. Like they're not looking for these guys to promote their product. They want these guys on the field winning games for their alma mater, for the the school that they root for the most. And one thing that really has come to mind, and, and Texas AM is an example of it, Texas is an example on the offensive line side of it, but on the defensive line, they've, I mean, they've acquired a ton of guys. Like how are they going to be able to keep all these guys satisfied with their playing time as the years go on? Because I mean, not only will they have a, a great group of defensive linemen in the 2022 class, but they're not going to stop there. They'll bring more guys in on 2023 too. So what kind of a problem is that going to create for Jimbo Fisher in a couple of years? Well, and that's another multi-million dollar question, John, because when you shell out multiple millions of dollars to be able to land all this elite talent, the question is, okay, what happens when you have five guys at the same position that are all expecting a regular slice of the pie uh, and a regular share of the playing time? You can't keep everybody satisfied. That's just the reality. You take the example because it's an easy one. I'll take the example of the wide receiver position. If you got seven or eight blue chip wide receivers in the same position group and they're all expecting to be the guy and they're all expecting to have a quota of targets and catches every single game. Look, somebody's getting left out. That's the reality. There's going to be competition in camp. Guys will prove better than their peers. And some of these players that come into Texas A&M with very high expectations in terms of what they could do production wise at the next level are going to get lost in the shuffle. And at that point, once you got your bag and you're not seeing the field, well, you're going to hit the transfer portal and go somewhere that you can play. And so I made this prediction earlier today on the radio, and I'll reiterate it here. I would venture to guess that probably half of this class, half of this 2022 recruiting cycle at Texas A&M doesn't finish their collegiate career in College Station. And that might sound like a large number. I don't really think it is, because when you look at most recruiting classes these days, You'll get, in general, at least five or six that bounce to go get a better opportunity elsewhere, regardless of the program and regardless of the number of commits overall. So especially for Texas A&M, given that they have 30 guys signed in the same class, which I believe is unprecedented, um, and all, all of, virtually all of them are very highly regarded players uh, with – a lot of expectations on their shoulders that they're at a college station. It's not going to work out for everybody and it may not work out for the majority. And that's just the way it goes. Are you uh, on that note? Obviously Oklahoma is not playing the same game that Texas A&M and others in college no. football are playing. What, and I know we've heard bits and pieces of Brent Venables and, you know, the rest of his coaching staff get asked about name, image, and likeness at different junctures. Are, are you hearing anything from outside of just what we see, what we hear in the press conferences in regards to name, image, and likeness at Oklahoma and what maybe the future of that looks like here? It's something that I'd, I don't want to say it's being discussed because that makes it sound like it's in the infantile stages. And I don't think that's necessarily an accurate representation, but 
OU is preparing to be able to play the NIL game alongside schools like A&M and Alabama and Nebraska and these schools that are out of necessity or out of luxury going all in on this uh, NIL driven recruiting philosophy early on in the process. I don't, I, I, I threw Alabama in there. I don't think it matters as much to Alabama. They're never going to have any problem recruiting, but especially for Texas A&M and particularly for Nebraska, I think those are two really good examples of programs that are going to shift the focus of their recruiting efforts toward NIL primarily. And so Oklahoma is going to be able to go toe to toe in the on the NIL front in these recruiting battles over the next few years. And they were prepared to do so with LT Overton. And obviously we'll never know what the number is, but I tell you what, that number, whatever it was at Texas A&M has to be a pretty impressive number because I know what the number was at Oklahoma and it was not a small number. So that gives you some idea of just how willing uh, the folks with the deep pockets down there in college station are uh, to fork over uh, these astronomical sums of money to get all this elite talent on their campus. And we're going to continue to talk more recruiting. We'll dig into last weekend's big recruiting effort by the Oklahoma Sooners and what that might mean for the future. But first, I want to talk to you about Built Bar. Built Bar is the best tasting protein bar ever. If you're trying to get ready for summer, you're trying to get fit, get healthy, now's the time to check out Built Bar. You can go to Built.com, use promo code LOCKED15 to get the best protein bar ever Great flavors like mint brownie, coconut, coconut almond, and peanut butter brownie. And they're low-calorie, low-carb, low-sugar, and have 17, 18 grams of protein in them. I eat one just about every single day. Helps me have all the energy I need for my work day. And you could, too, if you go to Built.com using promo code LOCKED15 to get 15% off your next order at Built.com. And, hey, if you're still in March Madness, you're still enjoying the Final Four that and what's coming up this weekend with the national championship as well. Go to Stat Hero. You can get in on single game pickums where you can pit the star players against each other in an amazing hybrid between fantasy and sports gambling. Take back control from the handicappers that always seem to have the advantage by focusing on the players that you know best with a gameplay that doesn't rely on big spreads, long odds, or funky props. So go to StatHero.com slash locked on. Use promo code locked on and you can get a 100% deposit match using StatHero.com slash locked on. Terms and conditions apply. All right, Parker, we want to turn to the recruiting weekend that they just had. A ton of a ton of players that came through across several classes as far as the 2025 class. They had some young guys out there. In the 2023 cycle, who was the one that showed up to campus last week that you think Oklahoma made the most headway on? In the 2023 cycle, the pickings are pretty slim in that regard. And so... I don't know how much of a cop-out answer this is, but uh, I'll go with the low-hanging fruit, and that's Caden Green. He was on his fifth unofficial visit to Oklahoma this past weekend, and it was a very efficient business-like trip this time around for Caden and his dad. Um, it was just the two of them. They essentially just wanted to see a practice and get back home to the Kansas City area, and that's what they did. Uh, they were impressed with what they saw. Obviously, Bill Biedenboe is the one uh, that's built a primary relationship there with Caden and his family, but Brent Venables has been instrumental in that recruitment as well. So all signs point toward Oklahoma being the leader in the clubhouse and the school that's eventually going to land Caden Green's commitment. Uh, there is no timetable yet on his decision, although uh, I have been told it's happening over the summer at some point. I would say probably July uh, is a safe bet as to when you're going to get a decision from Caden, but he's going to take all five officials. The other schools in the mix right now are Nebraska, Missouri, Miami, and Michigan. So as long as Oklahoma can continue to outflank those four programs, they're going to yeah. land the four-star offensive lineman at Elise Summit. You're like the Miami Heat, Parker Thune, except for you actually delivered. Not one, not two, not three. Five crystal balls recently in favor of Oklahoma. I, you know, obviously I want to drive traffic to OU insiders, so feel free to share what you're comfortable with sharing. But uh, who, who are some of these crystal balls for Oklahoma? I mean, that alone tells me that OU's got some serious momentum. Yeah, so I'll, I'll go ahead and give you the Cliff Notes version on each of these guys. And if you want the full scoop on where Oklahoma stands, 
uh, with each of these particular recruits. You can head over to OUinsider.com on the 24-7 Sports Network. Get your first month of VIP membership for just a dollar. So try it out for 30 days. Uh, if you like the information you're being fed, which I, I believe you will. Do it. Uh, might be a little biased there, but I, I tend to believe you will. Uh, also biased. I think it'll be it. worth your investment in the uh, – definitely worth your investment in the long run if you care about OU football. So uh, with that said, the five guys that I issued crystal ball predictions for this past Monday morning. Uh, well, let's go ahead and start with the guys that were on campus this past weekend, Stacy Gage and T.A. Cunningham. Uh, Stacy Gage was born in Hugo, Oklahoma, is now at IMG Academy after living in Georgia for much of his uh, childhood and upbringing formative years and is a five star running back in the 2024 cycle. Really like where OU stands. Uh, he's one of those guys that has just always wanted to be a Sooner. And so it's going to take a lot for any other school to overcome the lead that Oklahoma has for Stacey Gage, in my opinion. T.A. Cunningham, five-star defensive lineman, also in the 2024 class. Very good friends with Stacey Gage. And so relationships are huge there. He's got a lot of respect for Todd Bates, a lot of respect for Brent Venables. And in the early stages, it looks like Oklahoma is very much in the driver's seat in that recruitment. Long way to go. We're still in the 2023 cycle, so over a year and a half till those guys are going to put pen to paper, but I like where OU sits right now with T.A. Cunningham as well. Uh, Four-star running back Trey Wisner in the 2023 cycle. Oklahoma has led in his recruitment for a long, long time. I'm talking a year plus. And so to me, that's always been a matter of when, not if. Uh, got the chance to catch up with Trey and his mom this past weekend at a seven on seven event that I covered down in Dallas and uh, really solidified my belief that Oklahoma is going to end up with his commitment. The two others, three star athlete Samuel Omasigo out of Crandall, Texas, and four star edge rusher PJ Adebaware out of North Kansas City. Now, PJ is a very, very quiet guy, keeps most most details of his recruitment pretty clandestine close to the best but he loves miguel chavis absolutely loved oklahoma when he came down earlier this month for his unofficial visit he plans to take an ov oklahoma has a commanding lead in that recruitment he's got offers from michigan and georgia neither of those two schools have been particularly proactive in pursuing him the way that miguel chavis has in particular so i I think Oklahoma is very much on track to get a commitment from him. And then as far as Omasigo is concerned, uh, that's a guy that has offers to play both sides at the collegiate level. The Sooners like him at linebacker. And he just culturally, he is the perfect fit for Brent Venables and the University of Oklahoma. He skipped the Under Armour next camp a couple weeks back because he wouldn't have been able to go to church that morning. If that's not a Brent Venables football player, I mean, I don't know who is. So, uh, he's another guy that visited at the beginning of this month, uh, was really impressed with what he saw. The relationships there are solid. So I went ahead and moved on the prediction with Samuel Masigo as well. And there's a lot more that's going to be coming down the pipeline as well, but let's, you touched on seven on seven. You mentioned Trey Wisner. Who are some of the other guys that OU is targeting that you've gotten to see that Oklahoma fans really need to be looking out for? Yeah, in the 2023 class, uh, one guy that I would file away and one guy that I think uh, might not take too terribly long to make a decision is Mikhail Harrison Pilot, the four-star wide receiver out of Temple, Texas. He was formerly being recruited, hadn't been offered, but was being recruited by the former staff as a defensive back. Uh, the new staff likes him at wide receiver. Kale Gundy has an outstanding relationship there. Uh, with Mikhail and his family. So it looks like the Sooners are in the lead with that race as well. Uh, local guy, Jacoby Johnson, just up the road in Mustang. Four-star guy, legitimate impact player at the next level on either side of the ball. I expect that he'll land with Oklahoma. I have a crystal ball prediction into that effect, and I do believe he'll play defense for the Sooners. And if I had to throw in a third... I, I think one that's going to be worth watching is Wilkin Formby, the four-star offensive lineman out of Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Now, what makes this interesting is that Wilkin Formby goes to the same high school that OU's director of player personnel and recruiting, J.R. Sandlin, graduated from. So there's a connection there. 
Moreover, when Wilkin Formby visited Oklahoma in early March, he got the chance to meet Creed Humphrey, which was particularly meaningful to Wilkin because he's a big Chiefs fan. So that visit went swimmingly. Uh, from what I'm told, he has plans to return to OU. That's a guy, Josh and John, that Oklahoma could be poised to pull out of SEC territory. And at six foot seven, 300 pounds, I mean, you are talking about a large mammal with Wilkin Formby. So that's that's a dude that you want on your side, no doubt, if you can get him. How do you feel about the 2023 class, where we stand right now? I mean, obviously, four commits for Oklahoma. I don't know if you say that it's still early in the cycle. I mean, I guess we're sort of starting to come down the home stretch here a little bit, but how do you feel about where Oklahoma just currently stands as a whole? And when do you start thinking this thing's really going to pick up some momentum in terms of commitments? I think it'll be later in the cycle just because of the philosophy that this new staff espouses, which is, hey, if you're going to commit, you got to shut things down and shut things down for good. So there will be guys that like Oklahoma and want to commit to Oklahoma, but also want to take other visits and make sure that they're making the right decision. And that's completely understandable. Right. And so uh, that said, I don't know if you see a surge of commitments early in the cycle, just because I don't know how many guys are going to be that eager to pull the trigger early on. So I think it'll probably be June or July before you start to see the rubber really hit the road. But when it does, I mean, it's going to be an avalanche and you will see a lot of guys jump on the boat with the Sooners late in the cycle. In particular, I think October, November, those will be the months where you really start to see a surge. And by the end of it, I do expect that Oklahoma will have a top 10 and perhaps even a top five class in 2023 when all said and done. And it's going to be a lot, to, a lot of fun to watch. I feel like the summertime last year, it was commit, commit, crystal balls, projections, predictions. Just there's a lot going on last summer. Hopefully, the same is true for this summer as well, because that'll help build some momentum heading into the regular season, which is what we're going to talk about next. After I talk to you about Athletic Greens, we've got a new sponsor. If you're looking to get right with your gut health, you need to check out Athletic Greens, full of vitamins and nutrients. One simple scoop. Contains less than one gram of sugar. They got no GMOs, no ca- nasty chemicals or artificial anything, but it still tastes good. Whatever lifestyle you're trying to eat, whether it's keto, paleo, vegan, dairy free, or gluten free, got to check out Athletic Greens. It costs you less than $3 a day, and you're investing in your health, and it's cheaper than your cold brew habit. And again, it gets you all the vitamins and nutrients that you're looking for, and you don't have to take a pill for it. Just mix it into whatever you're drinking that day. Athletic Greens has you covered. Athletic Greens has over 7,000 five-star reviews, and it's recommended by professional athletes and trusted by leading health experts such as Tim Ferriss and Michael Gervais. So to make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash college. Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash college to take ownership of your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Also want to talk to you about Bet Online. Bet Online is the best place to place all your sports betting needs. BetOnline.net has all the info that you need from college to pros, basketball to football, hockey, and your va- favorite Vegas casino games as well. So head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action. Bet Online is where the game starts. All right, Parker, let's talk 2022 Oklahoma Sooners. We're in spring ball right now. Early on, what's been one of your biggest takeaways about this team as we head through spring with the spring game coming up April 23rd? Yeah, I think, to be honest, guys, it's it's hard to draw big picture takeaways just because everything is very much a work in progress right now for this program. And Uh, I say that based on what I've seen with my own two eyes and in talking to sources who have a lot uh, more regular of a perspective on that thing uh, than any of us in the media do. And it's it's a bunch of new players learning new systems. And so it's understandable uh, that this team has a ways to go. But I think you're confident in the leadership that Oklahoma has that's instilling this new culture and instilling installing these new systems. I think there's a lot to be optimistic about 
regarding this team, particularly when you look at the crop of newcomers, because I do think there are some incoming freshmen at Oklahoma that are poised to make a big impact in 2022. I have been driving the bus for Javante Barnes for upwards of a year now. And let me tell you, everybody I talk to about Javante Barnes has said one thing and one thing only. They've expressed a singular sentiment, and that, that is that guy is going to be a superstar at the University of Oklahoma. I expect he will get a share of the carries as a true freshman this fall in 2022, and he may draw a few starts. I think his ceiling's that high. He's impressed everybody with what he's brought to the table thus far. He's physical. He's elusive. He's really fast, and he's extremely athletic in an overall sense. And so that is if, if I had to point to a guy on an offensive on the offensive side of the football among the freshmen said that guy is going to contribute in a big way for Oklahoma this fall. Javante Barnes is that guy for me. Uh, another guy at the wide receiver position that I think could factor in the game plan is Jaden Gibson, just because he's so much taller than every other wide receiver on the roster. <laughs> he stands six foot five barefoot. I mean, you look at him next to the Sooners, other wideouts, he's a head taller than everybody else. So that's a guy that almost by default has to get some action in the red zone uh, and has to be in the game in those goal to go situations when you want to be able to throw the goal line fade or at least have it in the defense's minds that you can throw the goal line fade if you get a one on one matchup on the outside defensively. You hear so much buzz for Jaron Kanick, and it's 100% deserved because he is an athletic prodigy. And does he play linebacker? Does he play safety? I don't know. I've been told he's been repping a little bit with the safeties, but has been working for the most part with the linebackers. Regardless, I think that's a guy that's going to be too good to keep off the field in year one, not necessarily saying he's going to start uh, or necessarily – commandeer a majority of the snaps but he'll see action for this defense and then Robert Spears Jennings is another guy that I really do believe uh, is going to make a push for playing time he'll have his work cut out for him because this secondary is going to be deep so I don't I don't know whether I would be comfortable asserting he starts or even cracks the two deep but I do think that is a guy that will get some run in the back end of the secondary the two young tight ends that are coming in. I mean, obviously, it sort of sets up for maybe this to be Brayden Willis's show. That's kind of why he came back to Oklahoma. But with, with the two freshman tight ends, Helms and Llewellyn, one of those two guys that you'd like to maybe be in the mix this season? I mean, look, shout out to the 402. Caden Helms is a dude, man. And the word on him is he's easily the fastest and most agile tight end in that room, which is understandable. He's six foot five and 225 pounds. So honestly, he's more, he's almost more of an oversized wide receiver than he is a Trey tight Lombard. end. He certainly, yeah, he certainly moves more like a wide receiver than he does a tight end. So that's a guy that I can see certainly getting some action in the past game, particularly if they go 0-1 personnel and they split a tight end out wide uh, and they go empty backfield with Dylan Gabriel in the shotgun formation. If you're looking for a guy that's just able to create some separation and make some space for himself down the field, if you're looking for that in a tight end, that's going to be Caden Helms. It is Braden Willis's job. I don't think that's a secret. He's the most experienced and he's very well-rounded, very intelligent, and so he 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 will be your starter at the tight end position. I do think Helms will get some snaps, though. Jason Llewellyn is interesting, and he's a big body. He's a willing blocker. He can go get the football. To me, I just, I, at least immediately, I don't know how much he factors into the picture simply because the Sooners have a more experienced version of him and Daniel Parker, whom I also think is going to factor into the picture at least a little bit. So I, on passing downs I would count on Willis and Helm splitting reps with Willis probably getting the majority if you get down in goal to go situations then you're probably going to see Daniel Parker quite a bit and you may see some of Jason Llewellyn as well of the transfers that came in in the 2022 transfer class who's the guy that you're most looking forward to watching 
Aside from Dylan Gabriel. Ooh, that's Dylan it. Gabriel is like the obvious answer, but aside from Dylan Gabriel. Yeah, well, I was I was going to leave Gabriel out of it anyway just because Perfect. I've gotten so used to answering that question aside yeah. from Gabriel. But I'll yeah. say this. Most impactful, I think, is going to be McCade Mattier because that is an instant impact guy on the offensive line. He is a plug-and-play starter at left guard, was a three-year starter at Cal, and so he brings a lot of experience. And a, he brings a nastiness in the trenches that the Sooners really haven't had the last couple of years along the offensive line, at least not consistently. So I think he will have a lot more of an impact than most people would tend to believe for an offensive lineman. I would say the guy I'm most excited to see is Jonah Laulu because he is intriguing and he's actually been working with the defensive ends guys. The plan is for Jonah Laulu not to play inside, but to play a defensive end role akin to what Isaiah Thomas has done the last couple of seasons for Oklahoma. So at six foot five, 272, I mean, that is an imposing matchup for any offensive tackle. And if Jonah Laulu proves that all of the hype that we've heard behind the scenes for him is warranted and he locks down that starting position at defensive end, I think he could be a nightmare an absolute nightmare for this Oklahoma football team. And on the whole, guys, I think this defensive line is poised to be pretty special in 2022. When you look at not only Laulu, but Jalen Redmond, Jeffrey Johnson, Ethan Downs, I think is he, he Ethan Downs will break out. I'll go ahead and say Ethan Downs is going to have a breakout year. It'll be a huge year for him. And then you're talking about Marcus Stripling. Isaiah Coe, Jordan Kelly, I've heard good things about. So there's so much talent there. And interested to see how it all shakes out. I think you can safely pencil in Jalen Redmond as a starter. I think you can do the same with Ethan Downs. But there will be some intriguing battles in the trenches for playing time. And if Jonah Laulu seizes the bull by the horns, he has a chance to be a very disruptive force up front for Oklahoma. I would encourage everybody to just go subscribe over at OUinsider.com. And then you can get all of the insight from Parker Thune recruiting and not just strictly recruiting, but a lot of recruiting and then anything, the world of Oklahoma. Last question for me, and we could talk to you for hours because you're so well-versed in everything Oklahoma. But last question for me, just sort of bird's eye view. And I know you've talked a little bit about this tonight, but what's your expectation for this 2022 Oklahoma season. How are you feeling about it? I know we're still kind of feeling out process here of this team, but generally speaking, your expectations for 2022 at this group. I I think they'll win the big 12. And I, I know that may seem like a bit of a lofty expectation to some. I don't really think it is because on paper, this team is the most talented team in the big 12. And you got to have three things in order to have a successful football team, right? You got to have talent, you got to have culture, and you got to have coaching. And so uh, we know the culture has been revamped and revitalized under Brent Venables and this new staff. And if you're confident that these coaches are going to do their jobs and do them well, what is there left to question? So I really do believe that Oklahoma is going to resume its perch atop the Big 12, especially when I look at what Oklahoma State's lost, what Baylor's lost. To me, there's nobody that really jumps off the page at you that's going to snatch that crown from OU. And I understand that they didn't even make the Big 12 championship in 2021, and you can chalk that up to a million different reasons. But I think they're going to be right back there in 2022, and I do think uh, that they're going to win the conference. Do they make the playoff? I don't know, but I think they win the conference. Well, Baylor and Oklahoma State didn't make the Big 12 championship in 2020, and they are right there at 2021. So it – a lot of it kind of doesn't matter what happens last year. It's a whole new season. Everything starts over. Brent Venables said as much. He's like, and when we turn the page on this season, we'll start over fresh next season. And I just want to remind everybody why it's important to listen to Parker. So back in 2020, when we first had Parker on the show for several times, he told everybody that Caleb Williams would take over as the starter in 2021 and wouldn't let it go. And people scoffed. And I even was somewhat doubtful of it, but Parker nailed that one like on the head. It was crazy. So make sure you go check out Parker's work at OU Insider at 247 Sports. Hey, they also got a podcast as well, so make sure you check that out. You just search it on YouTube, OU Insider Podcast. Yes, OU Insider Under the Visor. Okay. 
There you go. So make sure you check that out as well. Always great information coming from Parker. Make sure you subscribe where he's at. Also follow him on Twitter at Parker Thune. Parker, it's a pleasure as always. Thank you. Hey, the pleasure is all mine, fellas. Always happy to jump on with y'all. Yep, and that's going to do it for today's episode. Make sure you subscribe to the show wherever you get your podcasts. Follow us on Twitter at Locked On Sooners and on Facebook, Locked On Sooners Podcast. Subscribe to the show on YouTube. Drop a question in there for Parker, and we'll save it for next time, and we'll get it back to him. But for Josh, for Parker, I'm John Boomer Sooner.